Now, the second responsibility of Christian servants that we see in our text is found in the first part of verse 10. And it's honesty. Verse 10 says, not pilfering, but showing all good fidelity. See, a slave is someone who would probably have had the opportunity to commit petty theft. Depending on how much responsibility the slave was given. But Paul reminds us that even those who are treated unfairly have no right to steal from those who oppress them. So he encourages slaves to be so honest that they will prove they can be trusted completely. Showing all good fidelity. This is opposed to those who would protest and, and would, would loot and destroy things, property, and things that don't belong to them. And so, how honest are we really? And I'm not talking about grand theft, but how honest are we in the small things? Do we cheat on our taxes? How about our time cards at work? Do we take things from work that don't belong to us, even small things? Or do we goof off on company time? Do we ever tell our spouses little white lies? So is honesty really the best policy? According to a USA Today poll, Only about half of Americans say they teach honesty to their children. According to a Lewis Harris poll, two thirds of American high school students said that they would cheat on an important exam. Listen to a statement from one of America's leading pediatricians. Lying is an important part of social life. And children who are unable to do it are children who may have developmental problems. Wow. So, basically, this pediatrician is saying that if our children aren't taught how to lie, for some reason, they're, they're not going to be socially developed. Consider this. A few years ago, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey ran a help wanted ad. And in that ad, they were looking for electricians, and it specifically called for electricians who had extensive experience using sun tag connectors. They got 170 resumes, even though there's no such thing as a sun tag connector. Their point was they wanted to see how honest people really were with their resumes. 170 people responded that they had extensive experience with something that didn't even exist. They falsified their resumes. We've seen even, even very popular and, and public figures who have falsified their resumes. Athletic coaches, professors, even university presidents. And when it comes to light, they, everything comes crumbling down. I, I heard of an incident where a pastor finished his sermon one Sunday morning. And he told his congregation, next Sunday I'm going to preach on lying and honesty. And for your homework this week, I want everyone to read the 17th chapter of Mark. And the next Sunday morning, he stood up and he asked, how many read the 17th chapter of Mark this past week? And every hand in the sanctuary went up. You know what happened, don't you? Yeah. 
He told them there's no 17th chapter of Mark. There are only 16 chapters in Mark. And then he commenced his sermon on lying. I'm not going to pull anything like that on you today. I'm not that clever. But I will encourage you to consider just how honest you are at all times. Not just at church, but also at home, at work, at school, in the community, 